All right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for joining our March meeting. Uh, so um, we have several items on the agenda, and I know we're really excited to hear Ray present about seed bombs. Uh, so <laughs> first, uh, I want to go around the room, see if we have any new individuals, and then I'll welcome our new members, which I'm not sure if anybody's on the, oh, I think I see Christine on the line. So, uh, so come on, show your video, say hi, Who, who's new? Is, is it Christine or is that? It's Christine, you, can Christine? you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah, this is my first time doing this. So um, that's why you probably don't see me. <laughs> well, maybe welcome. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Hi, Ray. <laughs> Are you able to come on video or not feel? Oh, that's what I'm just. I'm just. Uh, let's see. Start. What do I hit? I don't want to slow up your meeting. Here. Oh, you're you're fine. I think we're actually going to end up ending a little bit early, but we'll see. Uh, so I'd, I'd, it's more important for us to get there we go. each there other. Are. Hello. Okay. Long time Hi. no see. <laughs> I did it. Yes. Yes. Good a job. Room. Yes. I was so impressed. Signed up. Uh, yes. you know, doing this. Yes. Yes. Very happy to have met all of you. Yeah. So for those uh, that haven't met you, Christine, would you mind um, sharing just a little bit about yourself and what has you excited about joining Wild Ones? Oh, because it's outdoors, uh, but <laughs> indoors too. I've had a background in education uh, and have done a lot of volunteer work and a lot of public speaking. And I thought maybe my skills could help uh, spread the word. And uh, it seems to be um, something that I can get other people engaged in without um, too much controversy. How about that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. So. Who doesn't love flowers, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Helping the environment. It's all for good. Cause. Exactly. Exactly. That's where it's at. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us as a member. And also thank you for your help with the uh, you know, our, our seeds and social events. So we really appreciate your help with that. Um, anybody else new on the line? Pop up. All right. Well, welcome, Christine. Um, I know Lauren Jack is new with us, even though you were here the last time. So you're not the only new person. Um, so for those that are newer, maybe have not attended our meetings as much in the past, we are a newer chapter. Uh, obviously, our, our name is the Greater Cleveland Chapter, but we actually cover all of Northeast Ohio except for the Youngstown area. So we're really excited. We're growing. We have a lot of exciting projects. Um, but at the same time, we're also, you know, bear with us as we, we go through technology, <laughs> figuring, you know, figuring things out technology-wise, new processes. Um, but really our number one goal this year is, is, is community, you know, we're building a community here. Um, yes, we have these great projects and yes, we have our mission of education and awareness, but really at the heart of it, it's about the community that we're building together, which helps us complete our mission. So, um, we're really excited to have so many new members starting to join, um, as you can see here, since even our last meeting, we had four new members and one of them was with Christine. Um, I don't think anybody else is on the line unless I miss somebody. Um, well, well, there's Roberta. <laughs> I guess we'll put her on the spot for a quick moment. Hi, Roberta, are you there? She said in the chat she's having trouble unmuting. Ah, okay. Well, Roberta, welcome. If you get that figured out towards the end of our meeting, let us know and we'll be happy to say hi and let you talk with us. Um, all right, so we'll move on. Um, so for those that weren't aware, uh, we just had our seed and social event um, this past Sunday. Uh, was really excited. We had about 14 um, people show up or so. Um, and Ray, thank you so much for your helping in coordinating that effort and volunteering the seeds and, and whatnot. And Danielle, for your help with the, uh, the brochures and pulling that together. And um, 
So not only was this a social and a great, great way for us to get together, get to know each other, um, get some new members like Christine, <laughs> um, but this helps us prepare going forward into the year to have seeds, native seeds to be passed out, um, you know, help create the awareness, but also having brochures to pass out for events or, you know, just for casual information with regards to wild ones. So really excited. Um, you know, this is the second one of the year. We're really excited. Um, Ray, anything you want to add with regards to this? Um, well, I now have uh, more than 800 envelopes, packages of common milkweed seeds for distribution this season, which is huge. But that is just one species. That's probably that's the biggest count for any one species. I've got somewhere close to 30 other species that we have managed to pack um, between uh, this last weekend and, and the month before uh, that we got together and, and uh, packaged seeds. So we're gonna be able to distribute a lot. Uh, every public event that um, I go to uh, is gonna include free seed distribution. So thank you everyone that helped uh, make this possible. Uh, we're going to see a lot more native plants in the ground uh, because we've got seeds to distribute as part of our education and outreach. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys for everyone that showed up or, or helped participate. It's really appreciated. Like I said, Ray, thank you so much for, for pulling a lot of that together as well as Danielle. Um, and the other thing to remember for these events, guys, you guys get free seed. So come. I know Steph joined for just last time just for that purpose. So, um, you know, really, really excited. And um, for those who weren't a part of our meeting, I think it was two months ago, where we were talking about how to start from seed. If you need that help, let us know. We're here for you. Um, we also still have some of the sl slides, things along those lines. So, um, plus we have a lot of experts in the group. So if you need help with any of getting those seeds started, please, please let us know. All right. Uh, next, so some general chapter updates. Um, so uh, unfortunately, uh, Julie was not able to join today. She had a last minute cancel, um, but Julie Slater has been kind enough to volunteer as our website chair. Uh, this is one of those social media things that have been dragging a little bit behind uh, just because of our, our, our bandwidth um, with our limit of volunteers. I'm really excited to say uh, we actually do have stuff up on the website. It might not be a lot at this point in time, um, but Julie is making some great strides. Uh, we have, I think, almost all of our events for the next three or four months up on there. Uh, there might be one or two key things missing um, as we get a few thing, more things scheduled out. Um, but um, she's really excited to, to, to join our team. And um, she does ask that if you have any suggestions or ideas for the website that you'd like to see, um, let us know. Send us an email at wildonesgreatercleveland at gmail.com. And uh, we're always welcome, whether it's projects, whether it's with regards to the website, we'd love to hear your guys' ideas. Um, in addition, she's also added a resource uh, section to the website that's gonna start ha showing us our local nurseries and, and some other resources that will be helpful uh, to our members. So really excited to see that come out. Um, also just wanna uh, share a little bit since Julie's not able to <laughs> introduce herself to you guys. Um, she she's Meadow City uh, nursery owner, and the reason why she had to cancel last minute is because uh, they are um, sort of breaking ground uh, with regards to their uh, new nursery this weekend, and there were some last minute things uh, in the last hour or so that that came up that she had to cancel for. So she apologizes for not being here, but she's really excited to work with us. Uh, but she's also very excited uh, about her uh, next steps in her in her business. So. Um, uh, and for those that don't know, we actually have several other uh, nurseries um, that are part of Wild Ones. I believe Josh and a, a few others have them. So, um, you know, the, the, like I said, this is the audience. If you guys have questions, uh, whether offline or online. Um, next, uh, with regards to Earth Day. So uh, we are confirmed uh, for the Akron Zoo for 
Party for the Planet. We'll be partnering with the Youngstown Wild Ones, so we're very excited. Um, obviously, as a part of this past Sunday's event, um, we have some of our brochures ready. We have seeds. Um, I'll just be working with the Youngstown um, chapter uh, leadership to determine some of the next steps um, because I think we're we're going to have a good turnout. Um, we're going to look into seeing if we want to do an educational piece or an activity or something else along those lines as well. So more to come. Um, but we are definitely looking for volunteers now to ta help table this event and or any activities want to do with regards to this. So um, so if you are interested in volunteering, please either message us on Facebook or send us an email or feel free to put it in the chat. <laughs> um, and just let us know, because like I said, we have a lot of exciting activities coming up. Uh, and the more volunteers, the merry, that's what allows us to, to plan these out as well as actually, you know, um, participate in these in these activities. Um, next, uh, we are excited to confirm um, that we'll be helping Andrew J. Rickoff School with their Science Fair Day. Uh, so Ray has been kind enough to take the lead on this uh, project on the day of. Um, so Ray, do you want to share a little bit of information about that? Um, sure. Um, I followed up and, and talked to the teachers that are concerned, and uh, they were very eager to invite me in. And I said, well, I'd like to do a, a little uh, seed planting. Uh, let's, let's have each child do a little make and take. Uh, with uh, uh, milkweed seed so that they can grow a plant, take it home or plant it at the school, uh, but have one of their own. And I thought, well, that's great. I have the seeds, but there's a lot more involved when you're doing a hands-on activity like that, especially when it's 25, 30 students every half hour. <laughs> I said, can you guys, you know, provide materials, a, a pot and some topsoil? And they immediately said, yes, we can. Let's do this. And I said, all right, I'm all, I'm all in. Uh, we're going to plant some milkweed seeds. And uh, uh, along with that, uh, there'll be a little bit of teaching about what a seed is and why milkweeds are important. And so this is going to be very sciencey. I'm a retired science teacher, so uh, that's something that I really enjoy to do. And uh, I, you know, after ten years, I get to go back into a classroom uh, and do something fun, you know. And I don't have to give a quiz or or anything like that. Great, thank you, Ray. Um, so just a little bit more information. I believe there's going to be what six or eight rotations for thirty to forty-five minutes of students. I'll have five sessions. Five se okay. With with fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. One okay. of those grade levels I get twice. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, so we are also looking for volunteers with regards to this event, and this is more to just help Ray because it is going to be roughly um, anywhere from I think twenty to thirty students, depending on how they they uh, group them. Um, but I believe, Ray, it's from 8 a.m. that Wednesday to, is it 1 yeah. p.m.? Yes, yes. Okay. And there's there's a, a one class period break somewhere between those. So it's not five in a row. There's, there's maybe three or four in a row in a break and then finish up. Okay. So, yeah, so eat, whether... You know, you don't have to be an expert in this at all, whether it's whether you are familiar with native plants or you just want to lend a helping hand, um, it would be appreciated. Uh, you know, just it's very helpful to have at least two people there, if not more, the more the, more, the merrier, um, because it is for a, a good cause. Um, and the other cool thing about this, this school is um, they have a really large uh, garden um, that uh, they provide produce to the local community. Um, so there's more opportunities there that we might partner with them in the future. Um, but like I said, it's it's a really cool opportunity. If you have that free time um, during a weekday, it's Wednesday, um, it would be very appreciated. So like I said, feel free to message us or send us an email. Let us know. I'm really excited because we, we now have that confirmed commitment. Um, and then next, uh, with regards to activities, and I apologize, Ray, I didn't put this on here because I know it was a, 
a later thing, is we have confirmed that we'll be working with the Rotary Club. Um, now, I think we're, Ray, we're still aiming for the pollinator week. We don't necessarily have an established date yet, um, but uh, pollinator week is at the end of June. And uh, we'll be working with the Rotary Club, and it looks like currently the Girl Scouts and possibly the Boy mm -hmm. Scouts and a few other organizations um, to partner with them to help, you know, create a native garden here. Um, we're not quite looking for volunteers yet, but uh, we will be in the future as we get a little bit closer and, and, and have a better feel for our dates. Uh, we might be looking at multiple dates, um, but we're very excited um, for that project as well. And then um, some other things, obviously we need help, uh, whether it's with these upcoming events, uh, we are still looking for a treasure. Um, also, if you are good with administration, uh, you can always use help there, social media, marketing. Uh, Steph would still is still looking for assistance for membership chair. Um, this is something we'd like to fulfill a little bit sooner than later, because uh, for those of you not aware, uh, Steph is getting married <laughs> this summer, uh, and so we would like to give her some time off. <laughs> so we would like help sooner than later to help learn the ropes and, and things along those lines. Um, but the really exciting thing about the membership chair, I feel, position, and Steph, you can chip in here too, is what the part I think is most interesting is you, you're really the voice for the chapter when people first come on board and um, you know, get to know the person, their interests, you know, helping them, you know, you don't have to be familiar with native plants, you just, you know, work with all of the rest of us to help, you know, oh, you want to learn about this, or, oh, you're interested in the learning committee, and, you know, we have this opportunity here, or the pollinator pathway project, or, you know, there's so many, um, it's a great way to reach out and just lend a little helping hand, um, but also get to know, um, you know, the, the, the chapter and help build that community. Um, Steph, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you summed it up really well. Um, I would just add that, um, yeah, the, the, what's great about the membership chair and the committee that supports that is you don't have to be really good at gardening. You don't have to have any gardening experience. Um, we're just looking for folks who can help, you know, as new members are coming on or, if current members are feeling like they're not really as engaged as they want to be, um, it's just about helping people get the maximum benefit out of their membership that they can. Yep. Thank you, Steph. All right. Um, so once again, if you're interested in helping a little or a lot uh, with any of these efforts, please, like I said, message us either on Facebook, send us an email, just let us know. Um, the more the merrier, we'll work with you. Uh, we just appreciate any little bit of help uh, people can provide, so. All right, next with regards to updates, uh, pollinator pathway. Um, so uh, like I said, for those not aware, Julie has also was kind enough to help with the, lead the pollinator pathway with myself. Um, we're really excited. We just had the kickoff uh, meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, for those not aware, um, there's a lot of great pathways in the area. We're just trying to make this more accessible to the Northeast Ohio area. As another alternative, you know, this is not a competition. We're just trying to make easy access, create the awareness, create the education, you know, help provide education and support for pollinator pathways because it is really a great effort. Um, when our kickoff meeting, um, Julie did a great job of summarizing, you know, just educating people about what a pollinator pathway is for those that are not aware. Thankfully, uh, we have several people that were on the call that are very familiar with pollinator pathways that could lend their experience um, with regards to this type of effort. And we started off the conversation with some of our longer lead items um, that need some decisioning on. And uh, really for the most part, the only decision we pretty much confirmed is that we'll be going with a round sign versus a, a square or other sign. Um, and we started get, gathering ideas of what we wanted that sign to potentially look like. So we have not made any key decisions on that, but we've started looking at like, uh, you know, we heard a lot that we were really interested in possibly, you know, including, you know, keystone species. Um, you know, Ray, I think, came up with a really good idea for a, a unique butterfly that's not necessarily, you know, used as much, um, but is very unique and beautiful. 
I think uh, Lauren Jack, I think that our favorite, one of our favorite ideas that came out of that was uh, the potential um, to possibly, um, I can't remember how we worded it possibly on the outside, but a potential to write in the name of like, if there's a special patch name or group name that they would want to use for their area. Um, so we're looking at into that further, but that was a really exciting idea that was brought up. So thank you guys so much for that. So um, a lot of things still haven't been decided, but realize that, that a lot of this is about generating the idea. Um, and while we might be aiming for a very soft launch, and I wanna emphasize that very soft launch um, and Earth Day, we might not be there and, and that's okay um, because it's more important that we work together as a group to get your guys' thoughts heard, you know, vetted out a little bit more and then we'll work towards our soft launch, what, whenever that is. Um, but uh, more to come. Uh, our next meeting in theory is targeted for this upcoming Thursday uh, that is still a little unsure between a, a few things that Julie and I have to vet out uh, but also uh, with her business, uh, we want to make sure we 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 are both available uh, and ready to have those next set of conversations. If if for some reason we feel we can't accommodate that, uh, look that we'll probably target the week after that, um, just to keep that conversation rolling. Uh, because I do believe some of our next pieces that we want to dig into um, is how to you know to keep that community feel because I think that was the most, one of the more important things that came out of our conversations, because um, we don't want to lose that, that, that community feel, and how do we keep that, but also how are we providing support at that level um, in a sustainable manner, so uh, more, more things to come on that, um, like I said, Julie and I will be working towards that, um, but also if you guys have ideas in the meantime with regards to this, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, we're either happy to have a conversation or if you just want to list your ideas and um, we'll definitely be including that, um, th those thoughts and whatnot um, into our planning. Any questions there before we move on? Okay. Oh, and then for those of you who may have missed the first meeting, we're always looking for volunteers. And the nice thing about a project is you're not committing to anything long-term, just Feel free to attend our meetings, the ones that you're interested in, give your uh, thoughts and ideas. Um, and if you have to bow out for a few meetings, that is absolutely fine. Like I said, at this stage, this is more about the idea generation than anything else. All right, next, learning committee. Steph, would you, is it, uh, would you like to speak to this? Yeah, I can. This is exciting. Um, so I think it was the last chapter meeting we had that we kind of an announced the uh, learning committee meeting that was coming up. Um, I think that's what happened. Um, I'm fuzzy on my timeline. But point is, uh, the learning committee has gotten together. And from our first conversation, what we kind of zeroed in on is, you know, in terms of what kind of educational content do we want to provide for the chapter this year? Um, and we have so many new members or members who maybe don't have a ton of experience or don't have a ton of experience gardening with native plants specifically, that we decided that we wanted to present a curriculum specifically for those new gardeners. And so we're calling this From the Ground Up. And it's gonna be a series of workshops and seminars that are focused on helping you to develop skills and knowledge that you can immediately put into practice. So some of the topics that we're gonna cover in, these ser in this series is including things like identifying your growing conditions, like what kind of dirt are you working with? What's your soil condition? Um, if you get a soil test, what, what do you need to know from that? Or like, how do you interpret those results? Um, picking appropriate native plants for your growing conditions. Um, addressing invasive plants. This one is still in the works. So I, I don't have any like, it's not confirmed yet, but I think we're going to be able to make this a hands-on workshop where we're going to be able to go out and help with a, um, a current sort of um, garden that is maintained at one of the local schools and actually get some hands-on experience pulling out invasive plants um, so that we can make more room for those native plants. Um, we'll have a, ses a session on designing your garden, you know, thinking about what purpose 
do you need these plants in your garden to serve? So um, when we're, when Ray and I were talking about this, the example he came up with, which I thought was perfect, was if you've got a big open plot of land um, and you're really close to another house and you need some trees that are going to give you some privacy, okay, what kind of trees are going to be the best choice for that? Or what kind of shrubs? Things like that that you might want to think about when you're planning for that native plant garden. Um, and then we'll also have a workshop on integrated pest management. So really looking at how can we manage those pests that we don't want that we don't want in our gardens um, without the use of herbicides or pesticides. Um, and then throughout the summer, sort of towards the second half of this curriculum, we will provide a number of tours of local gardens. Some of those are gonna be tied to institutions like schools, like elementary schools. Um, some of those are gonna be tied to, you know, individual chapter members are offering up their private gardens um, and then some other resources around town as well where we can take you and, and really just sort of show you what you can accomplish if you invest the time and the energy into native plant gardening. Um, so I'm really excited for those tours and workshops. Um, I think those are gonna be really fun. Um, so the series is gonna be a mix of in-person and virtual seminars. Some things will be online, some things will be in person for those in-person workshops. Um, we may try to do some virtual streaming or recording so that you can access them after the fact, just in case, you know, getting to the location is difficult for you or if you can't make the time. Um, so dates, times, and locations, that is actually what we're still determining. Um, and for the learning committee meeting that is happening this Sunday, that is going to be our primary focus is really starting to nail down some of those details so that we can give you that schedule and you can start to kind of plan out the rest of your seasons um, you know, for in the spring and summer. So, so we can get you to those classes and get you to those workshops. So stay tuned if you're interested in helping with the scheduling or if you're really invested in learning more about what's going to be planned, you know, what are we going to learn specifically? Who's teaching it? Uh, where is this all happening? Um, feel free to tune in to our learning committee meeting this Sunday night at 6 p.m. We'd love to have you and we'd love to have your input on this series or anything else that you want to learn about through the chapter. Jessica, I think that's it for me. I don't think I have a second slide on this one. <laughs> okay. Great. And just another emphasis, you do not need to be an expert. And actually, in some of these seminars, uh, I'm prepping for it, uh, this or other topics. Sometimes it's actually better if you don't have the experience, so you can ask those key questions and look for guidance and preparation for them. So um, like I said, any little bit helps, um, whether it's helping cover a top one individual topic or multiple or with the presentation slides. However, you, you'd be surprised as to how little experience you need with certain things to help out. Yeah. The other, the last thing I do want to call out is while we are kind of designing this so that each, each, uh, episode, you know, kind of episode in the series, um, you can tell I've been watching too much HBO. Um, the kind of the plan here is while each of those seminars or workshops is going to build on the ones before it, you don't have to sign up for all of them. You don't have to attend all of the previous ones to go to the next one. So if you look at the listings, once we get them posted and you're like, hmm, I'm really interested in the pest management, but mm, I don't care so much about the design one. You don't have to go to the design one. You can just show up for the pest management one and that's going to be totally fine. Yep. Good call. All right, so like I said, sign up. It's really exciting. You see a lot about to happen. So, but whether it's event-wise or, you know, just educational, it's, it's, we're really excited about this. All right, so uh, upcoming chapter events and activities. So obviously you already heard about a few of these uh, learning committee uh, this upcoming Sunday, March 19th from six to seven, uh, the Pollinator Pathway Project meeting. We're anticipating to be um, Thursday, March 23rd. Um, like I said, might get shifted back. We'll see. Uh, another thing to remember, our uh, next chapter meeting, and actually all chapter meetings, unless something happens, is always the third Thursday of the month. And uh, the next one will be on April 20th. Uh, our Earth Day event, um, Party for the Planet, on April 22nd, uh, Saturday. And then uh, the other event, um, which I believe we mentioned in our last um, meeting, uh, but we didn't have any key updates for this one, but just as a reminder, 
is uh, we'll be working with Anne. I don't think she's on the line, um, but the Shaker Heights First Baptist Church um, will be putting in a native garden bed in April, um, date TBD. Obviously, this is going to be very much dependent upon weather. And then in May, there will be a second one uh, where I'll be installing those native plants. So really excited to work with Anne and the other volunteers for this. So this will be another opportunity to volunteer. But as we get a little bit closer, we'll provide dates. And then um, that's when we'll probably ask for volunteers to raise their hand, because we know that can change based on the weekend or whether it's a Saturday versus a Sunday or an evening, you know, things along those lines. So we'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, we obviously mentioned the Andrew J. Rickoff um, one on Wednesday, May 10th. And then our, um, our uh, oh, Rotary Park one, which will be um, towards the end of May, probably for, uh, oh, not, not May, June, um, for Pollinator Week. And also later in June, it's not up here, but uh, there's uh, Anne's house. She is going to have a plant sale. Um, this is gonna be on June 24th um, with Meadow City Nursery. There might be others. And then we'll also have information with regards to wild ones there. So um, also I've heard her garden is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so hopefully uh, there's plenty of flowers in blue. Um, so with regards to upcoming activities and events, really excited, please volunteer if you can help table or help participate with an activity with regards to some of these, because that is the case with a few of them. Um, also, if you know of a, a really good plant sale or an event that we can participate in, whether it's for Mother's Day or maybe July 4th or things along those lines, please let us know. Um, we are looking for more events to be doing in the next couple of months. Um, obviously, I think April might be booked, but um, but uh, but maybe not. So you know, don't hesitate. Um, yes, our primary focus is Cuyahoga County as well as the surrounding areas, but it's not always that. So example, we're obviously doing Akron Zoo because we do cover all of Northeast Ohio. Um, we're trying to just, you know, uh, pepper out where we're having some of the events. So the more the merrier, it gives her more things to choose from uh, throughout the year. And also it might give us an opportunity to tie into one of these other learning activities um, that the learning committee is working on um, if you hear of something. So please don't hesitate, whether it's a project idea or event, let us know or raising your hand to volunteer. Um, any questions about the upcoming activities, events? Okay. Um, for those not aware, um, the latest quarterly journal is out. Um, so this is for those that are members. Uh, so check it out. There's going to be a lot of cool information on here. Uh, for those who are not currently chapter members, um, if you join as a member, guess what? You get access to this as well as all the previous uh, volumes. So um, a lot of great information can uh, come out of these journals. Um, so uh, you guys will have to let me know. I have not had a chance to read this this quarters yet, so uh, be sure to check that out. Um, all right, Ray, you ready to? Oh, actually, before before I, I I go to Ray, any questions before we go launch into our educational topic? Hey, Jessica, we just had one question from the chat um, asking about. Um, so for those who are new or who aren't aware, let me turn my camera on um, the Wild Ones website, the, the national Wild Ones website, which is just wildones.org, um, has a series of native plant garden designs uh, that are designed for s different sort of um, growing zones and growing conditions. Um, they just added, I want to say about 11 more earlier this year, um, but we've got a question from the chat, Jessica. Is there a chance that we could get a Cleveland specific design on that list of native garden designs? Um, I didn't know, I know you're more engaged with the national board, but I wasn't sure if that's something that they talk about or how someone might kind of get that idea put forward. Not, I'm always happy to push that forward. Um, I do not know what's on the list next because they tend to do it in batches. Um, so uh, I am on at least one of their committees, not necessarily specific to that, but for something else. So uh, trust me, I will try to nudge that along as much as possible because I am all for a Cleveland specific. Um, 
I will say in looking at those um, designs, the closest to our area from both a plant and, and soil perspective was the Toledo. And there was a really good Michigan one. Um, the Toledo one's been out there for, I think, a couple of years. Um, but the Michigan one um, that just came out, it, it has a very, uh, very much overlaps with us with regards to both soil, but also the native plants for our area. You obviously just want to double check. Um, but when I looked at the list, um, there was there was a very, very large overlap. Um, so I think those are really great from an idea perspective. And then, um, and actually even ones from outside the area, because a lot of that's more about the design part of it. And then just, you know, identifying which plants might not be appropriate for our area or your soil conditions or like, <laughs> um, and just the, you know, figure out which ones to switch that with. And when in doubt, raise your hand and ask. Um, so uh, we have, like I said, we have lots of people here that, that can provide that assistance. And who knows, maybe that's a possible opportunity with the learning committee is creating a design for ourselves in Cleveland area. Because <laughs> I know we have wonderful designers uh, on the call. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe we'll enlist your guys' help. We'll go rogue, do our own thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Any other questions? We good? All right, Ray, you good? All right. <clears throat> so um, is, is my slideshow up and showing? Yes, okay. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just kind of rediscovered seed bombs uh, recently and thought that that would be uh, an interesting project for us, something that we might be able to promote, do a workshop on, get people together. Um, making seed bombs is something that could be um, a, an adult or a young person activity or some of both. Um, I think uh, uh, it, it's kind of like the finger painting version of gardening. You just get your hands dirty and you make something. And when you're done, you throw it away. <laughs> and hope that it works. Um, uh, so I, I was able to find a little history of this, and actually it goes back to the 70s uh, when they originally called it guerrilla gardening. And uh, what I heard was uh, uh, it started in, in New York City, but it could have started in just about any urban area where there was abandoned property that was uh, had potential uh, but wasn't doing much of anything, where some flowering plants might be able to get a foothold. So the gorilla gardening part of it is that is, is people that um, wanted things to grow were a little shy about trespassing. So they didn't want to go onto these properties uh, because they didn't have permission to. Uh, and yet they wanted to see it transformed into something uh, not so much of an eyesore. So uh, that's kind of what the seed bombing thing has uh, evolved out of, and it's really caught on and, and spread. And if we could have the next slide. So here's a, an image of a seed bomb that has been laying on the soil for uh, some time. And you can see it, it just kind of is a, a little meatball shaped thing. Uh, that's got some, uh, it's, a, it's a piece of clay, it's got some seeds stuck in it, and it lays there on the ground and gets rained on, absorbs water, and uh, starts to grow a plant, or maybe several plants. Um, so this is something that we could do or encourage other people to do, but we would want to do it with a somewhat, some amount of caution. It may technically be illegal, to plant something on somebody else's property. Um, but from the stories that I was able to get, um, nobody really objects to seed bombing, um, even though there may be some legal technicalities um, where uh, seed bombing has been reported, uh, the, the community and the legal enforcement uh, side of things 
kind of says like, yeah, but that's okay. You know, we're this is not the kind of problem that is going to catch our attention. Uh, we'll just kind of ignore it. So it's unlikely that any uh, potential trend, trespassing uh, complaints would be enforced. Uh, but nonetheless, if we do encourage this, we would have to uh, have a little bit of a disclaimer and say, bomb at your own risk. Um, we don't want to be publicly promoting people to do illegal things. So that's that's my disclaimer. Uh, real easy to do. Uh, here's somebody using an old egg carton to uh, make these and then store them. So uh, simple recipe. There's lots of different recipes. Proportions vary, uh, but using some amount of compost and then clay. Um, clay can be just your subsoil or soil uh, that you may have readily on hand. There's a lot of clay soils here in Northern Ohio. Um, you can buy clay. There's uh, craft stores that, that sell powdered clay and other forms of clay that you could use, potter's clay, uh, but that gets to be expensive um, compared to just sticking your shovel in the dirt and pulling up something that'll work perfectly fine. Uh, some recipes include other amendments, um, not necessarily fertilizer, but something like an organic kelp meal that may be uh, somewhat rich in nutrient, maybe not much different than uh, good compost. Um, and then enough water, and you just kind of work that together into a ball with some seeds and let it dry um, so that it, it holds together and can be launched somewhere or dropped somewhere. And um, that's basically the process. So it would be really easy to get the materials together and uh, have people just bring their own egg cartons and uh, make and, and take and uh, identify places where these could be put to good use and have a little and, and have some simple little uh, pollinator gardens uh, springing up in abandoned places. Uh, illustration just shows uh, the simple steps. Uh, that are here. Next. Um, these are seeds that I came up with as uh, possible suggestions, and I'd like to hear what anyone else thinks may be added or subtracted from this list. I was hoping to come up with things that would easily germinate, that are not seeds that are going to sit dormant for the next two seasons uh, before they tend to sprout and things that are likely to bloom in either the first year or the second year um, in the soil. Um, and also to have some uh, variation in bloom period uh, so that some would come into bloom earlier in the season and some later in the season. So those were my qualifiers as I was thinking through the kinds of seeds uh, that would go here. And I think um, partridge peas easily seeds itself down and continues to spread. So I thought that would be a good candidate for something to take over uh, uh, some vacant property. Uh, Black-eyed Susans, uh, similarly, uh, here I listed it as a biennial. Um, depending on where you look, it's either an annual, biennial, or perennial, uh, but it does seed itself down. Uh, regardless of uh, the timing or how long it lives. So it, it tends to, to fill in where there are opportunities. Uh, common milkweed is a great one to get started. Uh, and certainly once it is in place, uh, it will spread itself by, by roots and rhizomes uh, and become even thicker uh, wherever it gets established. Obedient plant, like many um, uh, mints, uh, also spread by roots and become thicker over time. Horse mint also uh, a similar kind of behavior. Um, purple prairie clover is one of my new favorites, um, partly because of the color. It's, it's a lower growing plant, uh, but um, uh, it will also grow easily from seed uh, to the best of my knowledge in most places. 
And I wanted to throw in common sunflower as an annual in here because um, um, sunflower is actually a, a native, even though it's been in cultivation for a long period of time. And there are hundreds of different cultivated varieties of them, uh, some of them for agricultural use. Uh, the common uh, Helianthus annuus uh, is a native North American species uh, that knows exactly what to do uh, when it's put out on the landscape and it will grow and the seeds uh, will um, overwinter and uh, continue to grow uh, more annual sunflower plants in subsequent years. So if anyone has suggestions for what should be added or subtracted from this list, having, what is this, two, four, six, seven, seed species in a single seed bomb, uh, that's quite a potent mix. And you're bound to get some kind of success, uh, whether they all sprout in every, whether they all thrive in every location or not, uh, would remain to be seen. Uh, but I think these are all very versatile, hardy, uh, will adapt to many different kinds of full sun settings. Uh, for more on this subject, that's a long URL to write down, but maybe uh, I can put that in the chat somehow. Uh, but I found this, if you just go to Pop Shop America uh, and look for seed bombs, uh, they've got some really good details on how this can be done. And this this image just shows how some some clay is spread out in a flat disc, some compost put in that, and some seeds sprinkled in that. And you roll it up like a meatball, and you're done. Uh, pretty easy concept. Okay. And a lot of great suggestions on how to use these. One is just to use them yourself. Find a place that you want to target and, and toss them. Uh, but you can also use them as gifts. So here's some that are wrapped in a nice little swatch of uh, fabric uh, to hand out. And what a great conversation starter to say, hey, neighbor, here's a seed bomb. Think you can find a place to put this and get your neighbors to plant them. You know, just a, a kind of a, a way to broach the subject of planting native uh, by making simple gifts. Um, next slide. And here's, here's something a little bit more fancier on a, on a popsicle stick, but uh, why not a bomb on a stick? Um, uh, it's, it's the same kind of idea. It's a gift. It's a conversation starting. You can use them as party favors. Uh, and the next slide, uh, some somebody was even suggesting, uh, this, I believe, was made with uh, recycled paper um, in, instead of clay. And then uh, they were using these uh, for like a, a wedding, Stephanie, <laughs> uh, to... to hand out to, to members in the wedding. Uh, I can so, picture Steph now bomb, uh, seed bombing uh, Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there you go. That's that's the whole story as I know it. Um, and if you've got uh, four minutes you want to waste, I've got a video to, to put onto the end of this. If you can share the sound as well as the image, uh, if you want to do that. I'm not sure how to do that. However, I am more than happy to transfer uh, hosting rights to you because <laughs> I don't trust myself technology-wise. Uh, so um, yeah, I've tried sharing a video with sound and then the video went and the sound did. So, it's so just... you have to, when you share your screen, there's a little uh, checkbox uh, when you select what screen to share that says share with audio. So it's before you actually share it, uh, whoever wants to try. Oh, all Thank right. Thank you so for that tip. Um, I don't see, I see advanced sharing options. Yeah, so if you click on share screen and then there should be something that comes up where you get to select which one to share, like which yes. screen window, and it should be like the bottom 
left hand corner there's a checkbox scare right. sound oh. oh all right let's try live that. tech support <laughs> thank you i've been doing uh wow. board meetings via zoom for the past i don't know how many years now so <laughs> good right, luck let me see if i can do this and this is uh uh seed bombing out of control just for fun computer request a security procedure and access to Project Genesis Summary. Identify for retina scan. Kirk, Admiral James T. Security scan approved. 23rd century Summary, technology. Please. Project Genesis, a proposal to the Federation. Carol Marcus. Yes. What exactly is Genesis? Well, put simply, Genesis is life from lifelessness. It is a process whereby molecular structure is reorganized at the subatomic level into life-generating matter of equal mass. Stage one of our experiments was conducted in the laboratory. Stage two of the series will be attempted in a lifeless underground. Stage three will involve the process on a planetary scale. It is our intention to introduce the Genesis device into a pre-selected area of a lifeless space body, a moon or other dead form. The device is delivered, instantaneously causing what we call the Genesis effect. Matter is reorganized with life-generating results. planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Fascinating. The reformed moon simulated here represents the merest fraction of the Genesis potential, should the Federation wish to fund these experiments to their logical conclusion. When we consider the cosmic problems of population and food supply, the usefulness of this process becomes clear. This concludes our proposal. Thank you for your attention. It literally is Genesis. Power creation. Have they proceeded with their experiments? Well, the tape was made about a year ago, so I can only assume they've reached stage two by now. But dear Lord, do you think we're intelligent enough to... Suppose... What if this thing we use where life already exists? It would destroy such life in favor of its new matrix. It's new matrix. Do you have any idea what you're saying? I was not attempting to evaluate its moral implications, Doctor. As a matter of cosmic history, it has always been easier to destroy than to create. Not anymore. Now we can do both at the same time. According to myth, the Earth was created in six days. Now watch out. Here comes Genesis. We'll do it for you in six minutes. I do not dispute that in the wrong hands... In the wrong hands? Would you mind telling me who's the right hands, my logical friend? Are you by any chance in favor of these experiments? Gentlemen, gentlemen, this isn't... Really, Dr. McCoy, you must learn to govern your passions. They will be your undoing. Logic suggests... Logic? My God, the man's talking about logic. We're talking about universal Armageddon. You green-blooded inhuman... Bridge to Admiral Kirk. Admiral, sensors indicate a vessel in our area, closing fast. What do you make of her? It's one of ours, Admiral. All right, well, that's it. Well, thank you, Ray. So, any questions for Ray? <laughs> Computer. No, stop. No. <laughs> All right, so can I stop sharing screen? Yep, go ahead and stop sharing screen. Um, and if you want to uh, pass host back to me. Um, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> ah, resume share, new share. 
I don't want either one of those. Stop share. Here. There you go. And then if you want to click the three buttons next to my name and switch me to host. Okay, did that do anything? Yes, thank you. I have my notification. I am host again. I feel special. <laughs> All right, so any questions for Ray? Um, yeah, okay, I'm still trying to get my screen right. <laughs> no questions? I think we just wanted to say that it's a great idea. I've seen seed bombs before. I haven't seen them used, but I'm excited for us to try them out. I might start with just giving them to people to put in their yards. I don't know if I'm ready to go toss them <laughs> somewhere, but um, I like that there's like opportunities to spread it and things we can think about and, and share. So I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. Especially when the seed bombs will annihilate all life if we throw them out somewhere. That <laughs> it creates life. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I I was thinking, you know, the, as much as it would great be great to change the world by simply, you know, tossing a few, uh, you know, seed bombs here and there, uh, I I'm seeing a, a a way to engage and do something fun. And and bring people together and make some of these talk about the potential um, and you know just uh, a fun hands-on kind of an event uh, that may be an inspiration to go beyond you know the simple little maybe it'll work maybe it won't and and to do some actual gardening but it, it may be an entryway to do something a little more deliberate. Very cool, right? So I actually have a question or two for you. Out of curiosity, and I don't know if you know the answers to this, but it got me thinking, how long are the seed bombs good for? I, I think they're good for a year. Uh, my thought was that we would, uh, uh, if, if we're going forward with this, is we would uh, collect the seeds we need, because there are seeds on those list I don't have. Um, or just use some seeds that I do have. But I was thinking later in the season doing that and then uh, encourage people to do a, a fall to you know early winter kind of uh, bombing with that. Um, but I, I think if you were to keep them until spring, it would still be okay. Okay, good to know. And then my second question is in case anybody wants to do one of these experiments sooner with the seeds that you selected, because I know it might change based off the species selected. Um, but if anybody wants to do that sooner and later, is there a certain time um, the seeds that you selected need to be planted by or, or because I know there's certain ones that are better for need to be winter sowed versus, you know, things along those lines. Um, yeah, I, I tend to, to favor, you know, late season planting. To give the natives a chance to overwinter, because that's often the trigger, uh, is just to being out in the elements for the the rain and snow and cold and um, you know freezing and thawing cycle uh, that that triggers their germination in the spring. That's that's what I would favor. <laughs> Steph, do you want to share that with the group? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I have a, a friend here in Columbus um, who is in the process of planning out his garden. Um, like he hired a designer to do his garden, and then he's just kind of turning it into a multi-year project to do all the labor for himself. But one of the things he's planning to do is there's that little strip of garden or strip of, of yard between the sidewalk and the road. Um, and what his planning to, is, his plan is, is he's going to put out a bucket of seed bombs so that as his neighbors or kids are walking by or whomever um, just have a little sign out that says, hey, you know, toss a bomb um, just to help him kind of uh, seed that little lawn strip with wildflowers instead of grass. So I think that's going to be a really cool, 
think it's going to be really cool to see. And I think it's also a really cool way to kind of like engage with your neighbors. Um, even if, you know, you can't always be out there in the yard talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I just think it's a really clever idea and I've thought about stealing it for our house. I was about to say that might be a, a good way to introduce a pathway project as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else guys? All right. So I want to open this up to the group. I, I know we have ended, you know, ended the main portion of our agenda early. And uh, but before we get to wrap up on, on some of the key action, uh, potential action items um, for us going forward, I just want to hear from the group. Any questions, thoughts, ideas, uh, th something that you might want to bring up? Do you have a question um, that perhaps somebody on the, on the line can answer? I'm just going to ask a general question just because the weather has been warming up a little bit, just a little bit. Um, we did get snow down here in Columbus the other day and I was very upset about it. Um, I'm just kind of curious uh, what other folks are doing in terms of planning for their gardens at this point. You know, who's got plans? What are you planning for? And, and, and when can we see it? Because I'm super curious to see what other people are doing. So I can start. Um, we just ordered, let me look it up real quick. I think the Cuyo Cuyahoga County Watershed. Um, yeah. Oh, the Cuyahoga Soil and Water District had, they were selling um, native plants and bushes and trees. And so we just bought some from them. Um, I think they're, I'll have to look it up um, exactly what type they are, but you get like three of each. So we've got pussy willows coming and some Eastern red buds. And I ordered a whole bunch of things. Um, so we'll pick those up in April. Um, I don't have a place for all of them yet, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, some elderberry and Winterberry, I was trying to, to build things out for birds. We have a lot of birds around here. So wanting to give them some berry bushes, but that's what we're excited about getting those. Sounds exciting. Can't wait. Make sure you take photos of before and after. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. I'll have to remember that to share with you all. I yeah, think, Laura, uh, I think that's water. Cuyahoga Soil and Water does a really good service by providing mm -hmm. these uh, bundles of natives. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're bare root, so they, they come in yes. dormant, and then you can, uh, uh, then you have to, you know, handle them. So it's a little more work, but you're getting a lot of plants for a fraction of the price that you would pay for something already rooted out at a garden center. Speaking of yeah. uh, water and soil, one thing I just want to mention the group because I think it would interest a lot of you. I believe starting, I think it's the end of this month, and I think there's a couple different sessions, but they're doing a, a water barrel program. Um, so that might be a really great time to, if you, you're possibly interested in learning a little bit more, but I think you can get the whole thing as cheap as, I think it's like $60. Um, so it's, it's a really great opportunity if that's something you're, you're thinking about, um, from a water conservation, um, and management perspective. Um, so I see a lot of other people putting stuff in the chat, speak up. I was just going to say, Laura, this is a really good reminder um, cause I know that, uh, where we are in Columbus, the Franklin County soil and water conservation district does something similar. Um, I think it's specifically with rain garden plants, although I'd have to double check. Um, I think, oh gosh, I gotta get my plant order in. Um, but it's some, I think it's something to look into, you know, if you're not in Cuyahoga County, uh, see if your own County has a similar program. Cause you know, I, cause I don't know how many counties might be doing this kind of thing. And is it just a matter of like, you know, we could all really benefit if we just knew about it. So that might be something to look into depending on where you live. Josh, I think you want to add to that comment? 
Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I am 98% sure that every soil and water conservation district, uh, at least here in Northeast Ohio that I know of, has a uh, native tree uh, sale. Some of them do native plants and seeds as well. Um, for the Chagrin River watershed where I work, Lake uh, Cuyahoga, Geauga, and Portage counties all have one. And I want to say that the pre-sales, I had to present on this at a board meeting, so, uh, but I forgot so far. I want to say the pre-sales end in either mid to late March, maybe into April, because I think pickups are in April. So you can just go, I don't know, Google whatever county soil and water and plant sale and see what comes up. They also do, um, a couple of them do fish sales if you have a, a large outdoor pond. Not like a tiny one for koi, but, you know, a, a fairly substantial one. So something to think about. Uh, Danielle, did you want to speak to your piece? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so I put in the chat, I am grow. I have sown now thousands of seeds. I'm going to be donating several hundred of them to wild ones. So hopefully when I get the chance to meet all of you, um, at our future events, you'll be able to pick up um, one or two or seven. So some of our species that I'm definitely going to be providing for Earth Day is, um, I've got Anise Hyssop, I have Foxglove Beard Tongue, we've got Baptisia going, um, Sneezeweed for sure. I have smaller quantities of, but we'll still be providing Purple Prairie Clover. Prairie drop seed, rose mallow, also hoary vervain, stiff goldenrod, um, of course, milkweed, and baptisia. So, those are just a few that I will be providing, some in greater numbers than others. I teach a lot of workshops and we sew these things together, and it's all educational based. So, it is very hands on. So, there are different levels of success. Um, but I'm a donation based backyard operation we'll call it so if you um tend to do mass plantings or um just happen to go on a shopping spree and you have several three to four inch pots i am always looking to collect those um being just somebody who just kind of pushes plants on people i lose a lot of pots every year and i, I don't get them back often so it would be kind of a cool way to repurpose rather than just recycling. If you end up getting a nice pile of them and happen to come to one of our events, I'd be really glad to take those off your hands and probably give them right back to you with a plant inside of it. <laughs> yes, thank you, Danielle. So yeah, well, that's something exciting that we're, we're, we're gonna start offering, um, you know, right around um, Earth Day. So, and obviously more to come. So Danielle, thank you so much for your help with regards to that. And yes, that is that is a key action item that we're gonna ask for people. You know, if you show up to one of our events or, or even if you can't show up to one of our events, but you know, you have a bunch, you know, please send us an email. We're, we're happy to make arrangements for you to drop it off at a convenient location. We'll make sure we get it to Danielle if you can't come to one of the events and, and drop it off there. Um, but we're, we're excited to be able to offer that out. So, um, so please spread the word on that. Um, cause we really, really appreciate Danielle's efforts on this. Oh, you have questions from Josh there, Danielle. And maybe you want to answer it to the group. Josh asked if I would take dirty pots. Absolutely. All of my equipment is dirty. It's stored outside in, that, in its natural environment. Um, I am a dirty operator. I am just always covered in dirt. I am not afraid of it. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm glad Josh asked the question because I didn't even think twice about it. And then it made me think like, oh, maybe I need to do something with the ones I was going to give you. <laughs> 
All right. Um, any any other thoughts, questions? All right, so action items. Yes, please uh, pass along the pots if you happen to have them, the larger quantity, and you want to drop off sooner or later, please send us an email, message us. We'll make arrangements for you to drop them off somewhere. Um, or, you know, if necessary, we'll see if once somebody's conveniently in your area and can pick it up um, or show up to an event. Uh, please raise your hand if you can volunteer, whether it's for one of the committees, projects, positions, um, or just to help table a one-time event. Let us know. We have several great coming up, um, but we can't do it without you. Uh, so uh, the more volunteers we have, the more exciting things we can do, like extra activities. And speaking of activities, if you guys didn't see the social media post, there's a really cool native plant game available for free. You just have to print it out and laminate it or do whatever um, that somebody from Ohio created. Um, so uh, it's constantly being updated. I think there's already been updates since the last week. Um, but I know a lot of people are really excited about checking out that game. So please feel free to share that, especially with educators. Uh, the gentleman is doing this for free. Um, and if you choose that you want to donate to, it goes towards um, restoring uh, needs, you know, land to native plants and things like that. So um, I thought it was a really cool idea of his, uh, something we just want to spread the word on. Um, other things, um, like I said, besides volunteering, providing, you know, those pots, um, you know, uh, spread the word about us. Um, we're here to help. Uh, we're here to support you. Um, but we can't do that without reaching out to people. So, uh, if you haven't already, if you know friends, family members that might be interested in learning more about wild ones, even if it's just from an educational perspective, mm -hmm. you know, please share our social media information. All of that information is free and available. Um, Obviously, we share, you know, as a good neighbor, other activities are going around town. So also let us know. But please feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And now you can start checking out our, our, our website. Not quite as informative. Um, I would say the best one is Facebook, but uh, Instagram is very closely second. Um, oh, and I see somebody posted a few more pieces of information. Um, uh, so uh, before we, we go to that part of it, um, Danielle, Ray, Steph, did I miss anything? All good over here. I'm just now planning my wedding favors based on <laughs> Ray's presentation. Three no, I think bones I... on a stick, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did forget something. Just as a reminder. Don't forget, if you're interested in even just learning about the learning committee, be sure to attend their meeting. Um, if you, you need the link, um, there's the registration information within the Facebook link. But if you don't use Facebook, please message us and we'll be happy um, to, to send you that, that invite link. Uh, Josh, Laura, it looks like you guys put a few more things out there. Did you want to share? Um, yeah, just some things I was remembering. I love this at the end, if we can share knowledge with each other, but um, we are at the very tippy top of Summit County. So we are part of like Summit Metro Parks newsletters and things, and they are doing a wild backyard program. And they have this great um, checklist of different things uh, like native planting, Invasive plant management, habitat quality, ecological footprint, and spreading the word are the different categories. And they're encouraging people to try a little of it or a lot of it. And um, we're going to try it this year. And it's just a great way to educate and get people excited about stuff. So I thought there might be some ideas in there of... Um, things that we could leverage as well um, in some of our programming later on, but um, curious about how this goes for them too. Yeah, great. No, please feel free, share the ideas that you come out of that, or if there's certain projects or initiative that maybe you want to see launched here, you know, bring it up. And, and if you're willing to raise your hand, we're willing to help, you know, to help great. with any of that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, very excited to hear how that goes. And uh, I'll, I'll also try to check it out as well. Awesome. Jessica, I um, that 
is right in line with something that I'm doing May 1st. I'm doing a uh, backyard habitat workshop on May 1st where I talk about all of those same things. So it might be a different day or it might be closer to somebody rather than out there because we cover such a large area. But May 1st at Lorraine County Community College, I am teaching my favorite subject, which is backyard habitat. Um, and this is gonna be focused on spring maintenance and all in favor of wildlife. So if you are interested, I'd be happy to share more information. Great, thank you for that. Um, Danielle, don't you also have a bird walk and a few other things coming up that you might wanna share with the group? Yeah, so I do a uh, bird walk um, each couple weeks during migration season, both in spring and fall. My first one this year is going to be on the actual Earth Day. So um, sometimes people are overwhelmed with how much they're doing and some people are just looking to get involved with something. And so I decided to have that on the actual true Earth Day. Again, that is at the college though. So it's, it's just kind of um, highlighting the different wild areas on campus and the different species that move through there to show the importance of those areas. Great, thank you for that, Danielle. So be sure to follow up and send um, Danielle a message. If you're not sure how to reach out to Danielle, feel free to message the chapter. We'll make sure Danielle gets the information forwarded over to her. Um, Josh, did I, I see you have some great information there um, with regards to possible <laughs> upcoming event and group. Um, before you launch into what that is, if you could send me any additional information you have, because I think that'd be a great opportunity for maybe us to join in an event if it's something open. Yeah, it's definitely open. I can forward you um, the email. I participated last year as a nursery. They had, oh gosh, maybe five or six other nurseries, uh, native plant nurseries there. They have talks in the morning, which I did not get to attend since I was, you know, loading plants and driving out to like Connie up. But um, there were a bunch of other tables, like the Holden Arboretum was there with their tree program. And don't ask me to remember any others because <laughs> I'm getting over a cold and I'm a uh, cold mess. But yeah, I'll forward you the information. Uh, it is on Saturday, June 10th, County Elementary School and Outdoor Learning Center. Uh, from eight to four in the like outdoor section, which is where you'll have native plant vendors and every other outdoor organization under the sun, hopefully, uh, is from oh, uh, noon to four. Okay, yeah, no, if you send that over, um, I don't think we have anything scheduled for around then. So um, we'll definitely take that under consideration if we have the opportunity to table there and or, and or help. Um, with something yeah. and I mean I'll be there so if there's anything I can like take in terms of wild ones I can I can do that I don't know Danielle were you at the one last year or did I make that up I can't I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know honestly <laughs> I Go to everything I can and I get them all kind of mixed up but it's called the uh there was an Ashtabula uh in Conneaut there were a lot of people there no I, I, I you there. Paw Paw festival and and a few other events but I don't think I've gone to this one yet okay cool well I'll send out that information to everyone thank you so much for that Josh yeah if you can email yeah. the chapter for that um, I'll personally look at it and, and but, uh, you know, if, if there's already contact information that you can share, please do. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can be there or, or just coordinate with you maybe to your point. So, um, and then Josh, um, since we have just a couple more minutes, um, you know, I know we talked a little bit very briefly about um, uh, Julie's business, but did you want to share a little bit about yours? Because I don't know if people here know about your your, your nursery. So, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm ac I'm actively right now in my garage, which is why I do not have my camera turned on. 
uh, <laughs> potting up bare root spring ephemerals for um, Planet Native, which uh, Christine, one of the new members, uh, has brought herself and uh, I want to say her daughter to the Willoughby Farmer's Market uh, in the past. So I sell out of the Willoughby Farmer's Market and then starting this year, I will have um, some sales and open by appointment from our home as well, where I have a hoop house. But yeah, uh, I'm the owner and sole worker of Planted Native. And so the Willoughby Farmer's Market starts, uh, oh gosh, Saturday, May 6th. So we've got some time, but it's also coming up very quickly. <laughs> I believe it. Speaking of, of spring of I'm I'm disappointed. I haven't seen any of my spring yet. And I've, I've been seeing so many photos of other people's. I don't think my bare roots uh, for my like shooting stars or, um, oh my goodness, I think I got the Virginia bluebells and a few other things. I planted it in the fall and I haven't seen anything sprout yet. Makes me worried that none of them made it. What, uh, what area are you in? Um, Berea. Okay. I mean, I'm obviously I'm over in Willoughby, but I, <laughs> none of that stuff has come up in the yard for me either, but in okay, the, it makes me feel a little bit better because yeah. I've definitely seen people a little bit further south in Ohio. Like it's already like not just a little, like a little sprouting, like we're talking <laughs> in, in my hoop house, mm -hmm. I have the shooting star and, um, Virginia bluebells coming up already so okay. I think that's supposed to be like a couple of weeks ahead of where we currently are uh if okay. spring decides to show up oh, well thank you for giving me hope and that my yeah. my fall plantings might have survived <laughs> a little nervous we'll see we'll see how it goes so I'll be very disappointed because I was really looking forward to a few of those so all right, guys. Well, thank you guys so much. I, I actually really like this, this uh, you know, end conversation, hearing what's going on, see what questions people have and other stuff going on. So um, should anything else come up, ideas, thoughts, volunteering, you know, please don't reach, ha hesitate to reach out. It was really a pleasure uh, to talk with all of you guys tonight. And uh, like I said, spread the word, let, let people know about us. And uh, We'll talk again. See you guys, uh, if nothing else, in a month. Bye, guys. Thanks, Jessica. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.